Hey everybody, Drew here from North 40 Fly Shop in Lewiston, Idaho. We're going to do a little bit of tying today. Today I'm going to tie a fly call that I'm calling the slide whistle. It's my take on John Barr's really famous fly, the meat whistle. Um, I've made mine kind of bass centric. You can still use it for trout of course, but I've taken quite a few liberties here. It's kind of bastardized, but I'll show you how I tie it, what it's made of uh, here in the next segment. Thanks for watching. All right, so let's get into this fly. Um, I have already put my rabbit strip on the hook as well as my cross-eyed cone with some eyes. Um, the hook that I'm using is the NU one, size one 90 degree jig hook. <clears throat> the cone that I'm using here is the Spirit River cross-eyed cone 3 8 and uh, on it I've got some living eyes. This is the five millimeter from Fish Skull, Earth Color. UV Polar Chenille and Olive from Hairline. Magnet, Magnum Rabbit Strip uh, in black, also from Hairline. I'm using this Kelly Gallup Brown Olive Schloppen from Nature Spirit. And last but not least, I'm using some Sexy Floss for the legs from MFC and Olive. And then what I've put on the head here is Loon Hardhead Clear. Um, just keeps those eyes on and uh, makes it have a little bit of a glossy finish. It's going to ride down on the bottom, so it's going to get banged up quite a bit. So having that little bit of protection there is good. So again, this is going to be similar to... John Barr's pattern, but I've, I've changed quite a bit here. Um, I'm not using wire on mine like he uses. Again, I'm using Schloppen instead of Marabou. Um, I'm using the Polar Chenille rather than like Estaz or a different type of Chenille, just regular large Chenille or something like that. So I'll show you kind of my first step here, which is going to be to put on my Polar Chenille. Grab the tip here and tie that dude in. And this rabbit can get kind of in the way. And I forgot to mention that. So on that rabbit strip, I've made it kind of one and a half times the length of the hook. And what you're going to do is just impale that guy and then set it on the hook and kind of push it back. But also key what you, to this is you kind of want to cut this little strip in there, that sort of V. Um, gives a little better swimming action. So I'm going to secure that down. Bring my bobbin forward. Park my bobbin just right behind that cone. I'm just going to palmer this stuff forward using the rotary function of my vise. Some of that stuff is going to get trapped. You can kind of pick it out with your fingers and then comb it out later. Once I've got it here, I'm just going to work my bobbin over that, secure it down. And then cut this free. I leave that polar chenille in this case in the packaging just to prevent waste. So at this point, I can take my rabbit strip, secure it down, and try to get some of those fibers back. I'm going to hold this in place so it doesn't want to move to one side or the other. This is going to come back eventually, not quite that far, but pretty far. I'm going to put in some more materials, of course. So I want to leave ample space. Next, I'm going to put on my legs. Just 
Just going to grab, I think probably two or to three strands here. Let's go with two in this case. I'm going to take these and go around my thread, double it over. Grab both ends. Park them kind of on top of the hook. Secure those down. Split it. Do a couple more wraps. Looks pretty good. I'm going to trim these to the length I want, which is just slightly shorter than my tail. That's looking pretty good there. So I'm going to grab my schloppen. On Barr's pattern, he uses some flash. I'm going to omit that from mine. I've got a pretty good deal of flash here from my polar chenille that I'm happy with. So I'll just use what I got. I'm going to grab a couple pieces of schloppen here. I'm going to come in here and clean up this under fiber that I don't need. I'm going to tie this stuff in by the tip. A little bit of that fuzz is okay. I think. Maybe people don't, but I think it's just fine. Fish don't care. So I'm going to grab two pieces here. Want to create a little bit of mass, make it look kind of bulky, sculpiny. Grab some of that stuff, clean it up. So I'm going to use both of these feathers here. Again, tying in by the tip. Snip off my excess. Grab my second one. Pretty close to where I tied in the first one. Mm, that'll be probably perfect. Wrap my thread forward. Park my bobbin. I'm going to come through, make sure all these fingers are laying out straight from each other as best I can get it to be. Pretty close anyway. I'm just going to palmer this. Oh, broke one of my feathers. It's alright, we can save it. That's two videos that's happening to me now. What am I doing? Am I new here? Happens sometimes. those feathers straight again start wrapping and again if I can I want to kind of preen those back as much as possible I'm going to do about four to five turns here you'll kind of know when it feels right I think that looks pretty good right there, so I'm going to go ahead and secure this down. Pull that dude back. And 
And I want a little bit of mass there because this is going to ultimately slide back. My cross-eyed cone's ultimately going to slide back like this. So a little bit of mass there is fine. A little bit of space is ideal because what I'm going to do here, and normally what they do on this pattern when they, when it's tied, is they just tie it down, secure it down, and then they're going to hop over the cone with their bobbin. Um, I'm actually going to whip finish here and then go in front of the, the cone and start my thread base again. Just secures it down a little bit more for my liking. I think it looks maybe just a tad nicer, but that's just me. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do two on this. So, now once I'm at this stage, again, I kind of want this to get pushed back. So once I get my thread on here, I'm going to leave that tag end on because I'm going to use it I'm going to use it to pull back against that cone. Gives just a little bit of tension so that I can build up a good thread base. Kind of get your eyes situated how you ultimately want them to be. And just understand here that you're going to use a lot of thread. Um, so that's why I use a thicker denier. This is 200, UTC 200. So I'm going to build up a big bulky head of thread here. It's looking pretty dang good I think. Pretty happy with that so now I'm going to snip off my tag. Do a couple more wraps. Do a little bit more. Really tighten this dude down. That's perfect. I'm going to whip this. Now that I've got this whipped, I'm going to hit it with a pretty generous amount of uh, head cement, which in this case for me I'm using JB Weld or JB Super Weld Super Glue. Use whatever you like, but that's what I'm going to use. And again, I want to use quite a bit here because I don't want those threads to come unraveled because that is what's ultimately holding in our cone, of course. I'm going to let that dry and then I'll probably put on a second coat, but otherwise that's good. Um, this fly is ready to fish. But I've had good luck with this here on the snake for bass and the rond as well. Um, you can definitely use it as a sculpin pattern. It makes a pretty big bulky head like a sculpin does. Plenty of movement from both the tail and the legs. Again, if you wanted to, you could put some flash in there, but I'm pretty happy with the way this one looks right here. So I'm gonna call that, and uh, that right there is what I'm calling the slide whistle. And thanks for watching.